Chapter Three of the Giant Killer, or the Battle Which All Must Fight. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. The Giant Killer, or the Battle Which All Must Fight, by Charlotte Maria Tucker. Chapter Three. The Giant Sloth. It was the still hour of twilight. The moon still shone in the deep blue sky, but her light was becoming pale and dim. The stars had gone out one by one, and a red flush in the east, deepening into crimson just behind the hill, showed where the sun would shortly appear. A knight lay stretched on the mossy ground, his head reclined on a shield, his two-handed sword girt to his side even in his sleep his hand rested on the hilt this was the brave champion fides the chosen knight to whom had been given mighty treasures and a golden crown by the king whom he had served from his childhood but he was not yet to enter into possession of his riches he was not yet to wear his bright crown hard labors great dangers were before him he was to fight before he might enjoy so fides was to pass alone through the enemy's land to slay every giant who should oppose him on the way his king had provided him with strong armor and with a wondrous sword which gave certain victory if he who drew it shrank not back like a coward or yielded to the foe like a traitor he had in truth nothing to fear but his own slackness in fight if but faithful he must be triumphant the knight slept soundly on his soft couch for he was weary with long travel that night he was roused by the touch of a hand so light that the dew could hardly have rested more gently on his shoulder and yet there was something in the power of that touch which not only broke his slumbers but restored to him in a moment all his waking powers he started up and beheld before him a beautiful messenger sent by his king her robe was of woven light a starry crown was upon her head and the glance of her eye penetrated the heart and laid open its most inmost feelings fides recognized conscience his companion and friend who invisible to all eyes but his own had come on an errand to the night sleeping still she exclaimed with your labors all to come sleeping on the enemy's ground rouse you recreant champion and draw your sword see you not yon towers before you it is there that giant sloth holds his court you cannot pass on until he is slain this is the hour to attack him in his hold soon after sunrise he quits it to roam abroad if not attacked early he will escape your pursuit on then and victory attend you oh conscience i am weary fides replied a little more rest may be mine the sun is scarcely seen above yon ridge grant me another hour's slumber go at once replied the bright one or you go in vain but how to make my way into the castle press the hilt of your sword against the heaviest door and it will open as if by a key but if difficulties should arise or doubts perplex me breathe upon the hilt of your sword and you will behold me beside you though unseen i will ever be near you delay not now for look at the sun what a flood of light he pours on the world when the great clock in the giant's tower strikes six it will be too late to encounter him that day he may vanish before your eyes but neither be conquered nor slain go and even as the words were upon her lips the bright one vanished from his sight with rapid step and a resolute spirit fides sped on to his first encounter the way was plain before him not even the youngest child could have mistaken it in front arose the castle of giant sloth whose heavy 
shapeless mass looked as though it had been built of clouds fides sword in hand pressed up to the door it was open as if to invite his entrance and he at once proceeded into the large hall a strange scene of confusion was there the whole place was littered with unfinished work blotted pages and blank ones playbooks torn and without their backs dresses in rags and neglected volumes with leaves yet uncut but the strangest thing was the feeling of heaviness and dullness which stole over the night the moment that he entered the hall it seemed too much trouble even to pass through its length he would fain have laid himself down and slept the place was very still the only sound heard was that of someone heavily breathing in a room that was near fides doubted not that this was the giant himself animated with the hope of gaining his first triumph the knight resolutely struggled against the sleepy sensation which made the danger of that enchanted hall he passed through it and found at the end that what he at a distance had mistaken for a wall was only a huge web like that which the house spider weaves not the light network which is strung with bright beads of dew but thick close and darkened with dust through this strange curtain fides with some difficulty could see into the inner room where the giant lay asleep sloth's huge clumsy form was half sunk in a great heap of down not a feather of which stirred in the heavy air except such as were moved by his breathing here then was the knight and there was his foe but how was the first to reach the latter only the web was between and fides threw his whole weight against it hoping easily thus to get through not so it bent but it did not break every thread in the yielding curtain seemed as strong as though it had been made of iron wire fides drew back disappointed and surprised something that was not weariness but possessed the same power to deaden energy and make effort disagreeable seemed pressing his spirit down his eyelids grew heavy he could scarcely keep them open he felt a strong and increasing desire to indulge the sleepiness which had now come over him but there was an object before him which made him struggle against the enchantment just above the feathery couch of the giant was a huge clock with a dial of silver and numbers of gold and the hand which glittered with many a gem had almost touched the point of six now or never thought fides with another strong effort as he remembered the words of conscience again the web yielded to his weight but not the smallest flaw appeared in its fine texture to give him hope of succeeding in breaking through ding 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 the hand is at six the giant is beginning to stir fides with sudden resolution lifts his sword on high down it descends on the web which as the blow divides it starts back on each side till a very wide gap appears fides springs through the opening he is just in time and the next moment giant sloth lies dead at his feet well exclaimed adolphus with a comical expression on his face as soon as mrs roby had closed her book i suspect that this story from beginning to end is all a hit upon me I thought it was a hit upon me said little Laura when I heard of the broken backed playbooks and the room in such shocking disorder It might have been a hit upon me thought Bertha who Indolent by disposition had felt the moral touch her in the description of unfinished work It is a hit upon no one replied mrs. Roby unless any person present chooses to consider himself as giant sloth or one of his brotherhood your faults are your enemies the greatest enemies of those over whom they exercise the greatest power pray at this our first reading of the giant killer let me impress this strongly upon your minds 
I would not hurt the feelings of one of my listeners far less would I encourage them to find out and laugh at the follies of each other My desire is to lead you to consider that you are all and each of you yourselves in the position of my hero The foes which he had to conquer you also must fight You have the same aid to encourage you the same motives to rouse the same giant may not be equally formidable to you all but every one has some enemy with whom he must struggle in a strength that is given to him armor not his own ah said alec i was sure that there was some meaning in that part of the story the two-handed sword also which nothing could resist what was that interrupted constantine i would rather that you should discover that for yourself said mrs roby if the kernel of an allegory be good it is worth the trouble of cracking the shell oh but i hate all trouble cried adolphus above all the trouble of thinking take care take care laughed little laura or we shall suspect that you have been caught by giant sloth End of chapter three